Hey. Hi. Um, so we can begin now. It's one being sharp. So um, hi everyone. This is the session for the application development and containerization track. It'll be a talk by Daniel Walsh and Urvashi Mohani, and it will be for the um, running Podman within a container. So all the best, guys. Take it away. One second. <laughs> I am not prepared for this. Okay, so to, so this uh, so my my name is Dan Walsh, and uh, uh, I basically the uh, lead engine the technical architect of of uh, container technologies at Red Hat. Um, everything runs on the Linux uh, platform. Everything runs underneath Kubernetes. So, Urvashi, who are you? Hello, everyone. My name is Ravi Shimonani, and I'm the team lead for the OpenShift Containers team, as well as an engineer on it, and a co-organizer for DevConf, if you didn't know that from today's morning keynote. So this this talk is uh, sort of, uh, we've been uh, probably one of the most often questions that we get asked um, in, in the Podman world is, is, how can I run Podman inside of a container? Uh, most people are looking at uh, running Podman inside of a container. Uh, use cases are usually around um, uh, the ability to uh, run, con uh, you know, containers within a CI/CD system. Uh, lots of people want to run, you know, that they might have native support for something like Docker, but they want to test out Podman commands, so they want to run Podman inside of Docker. Um, a lot of people want to do things like building container images inside of the CI CD system or inside of Kubernetes. Uh, so what we, you know, we we're constantly getting asked and people trying to, to run Podman inside of a container, and then there's lots and lots of repeat errors, and so. Um, a couple of months ago, Urvashi and I started working on a couple of papers together to uh, sort of you know, generate what we thought were the best practices for running containers, running Podman containers inside of a container. Um, and then you know, during that time, we, we uh, you know, also sort of developed uh, a, an actual container image that we now subscribe as being the best way we have figured out to run containers in the containers and sort of get everybody focused so we all could work together on on improving the ability to run containers within containers. Um, but interesting thing about, you know, a lot of people had used Docker inside of a container, but Docker really sort of runs in, you know, in one way, right? It's sort of a root running container. It always requires privileges. Um, and um, with Podman, we, you know, had lots of different um, ways of running Podman. Um, and also we had different security uh, constraints. So I wanted, we wanted, while we we're going through this exercise, I think we came out with I don't know, about 20 different uh, mechanisms for running Podman in a container. Um, and so, you know, the, the, we're going to go through some of them today, and I'm going to go through and describe sort of the, the image, how, how we configure the image to make this easier, um, the can, image that actually runs Podman. So go back one. Sorry, I didn't mean for you to jump ahead. So uh, to give you some of the scenarios that we're talking about uh, that we investigated in the papers that we wrote uh, was, you know, you could run on the host, you could use a rootful podman, or you might want to use Docker daemon to run the podman. Um, and then, you know, you could also want to use rootless podman to run, you know, a podman. And then you want to run, say, with the tool like Kubernetes, you might want to run it. Um, but inside of the container, then you have two options, right? You're either going to be running rootful podman or you can run root list podman. Um, so what we looked at is all the different you know, pot potential combinations of, of these um, and then ways to, to do it uh, best. So now we get, so during this process, we came up with um, uh, what's the quay.io slash podman slash stable um, image. And that's what we recommend currently um, to run Podman, you know, if you want to run Podman inside of a pop container, this is sort of our best practices. This is the image that we defined as being the best way they might want to run Podman inside of a container. Um, there are other images under quay.io slash Podman. There's one called Upstream, uh, which is really, so stable is, is sort of the latest version of 
uh, what we release in Fedora. Most of us work, uh, most of the core engineers work inside of Fedora. So it'd be a Fedora 34 image at this point. So the latest stable version of Fedora, as well as the latest stable version of Podman that's been released of Fedora. Testing is a similar image, except that in testing, it's, it's using uh, a Podman that might not have been fully released to stable, uh, but might be in the updates testing part of, of Fedora. And then there's upstream, which is just takes, taking whatever the daily, uh, basically it takes the daily um, main branch of, of GitHub and creates a Podman based on that. So that, that one's totally, uh, um, you know, that's if you want the latest and greatest um, is a way to experiment with that. For the most part, we tell everybody to use stable. So now let's go look at how we um, actually built um, the container image. Um, and of course, I'm, I'm having a hard time seeing that. <laughs> so let's go down and uh, click in, in the next section. So, so the first thing is, as I said, we, we, when we this is basically the Docker file um, that we use. Uh, the reason we use Docker file instead of container file, which are really the same thing, is that Docker file is the only thing that's supported for Quay.io to automatically build. So we had to use a Docker file. But the first uh, image that we use for building this is again the latest Fedora image, which is in this case right now is Fedora 34. Um, and then we start to install software on top of that. So now we go down and basically what we're installing is the latest version of Podman. We're fully updating the system. Then we're installing Podman. Um, there's a bug in upstream Fedora images for Shadow Utils, so we do a quick reinstall of that. But really what we're installing is Podman. Uh, we also install Fuse Overlay. Um, and then we actually exclude things like container SE Linux to try to keep the size of the image. Since we're not really running SE Linux inside of the container, we don't need to have it installed there. The next section goes out um, and basically creates a Podman user. Um, since we're gonna use the same image for running either rootful or rootless containers, we wanted to create a user inside of the container image um, that we would use for running rootless containers. And then we call that uh, user Podman. And we configure the Etsy sub UID and Etsy sub GID files inside of the container to be able to run with a group of UIDs. Now, we, when we're running in rootless mode, ordinarily uses, oh, if you're running a rootless container inside of a rootless container, you usually only have 65,000 UIDs available. So we, don't, we can't use the full 65,000 UIDs inside of the container if we only have 65,000 outside of the container. So because of that, we just uh, allocate 5,000 UIDs to run containers inside of containers. Um, now this might, be something that you would want to change if you wanted to build your own image off of this. But right now we only support using 5,000 inside of the stable Podman images. It only allows you to use 5,000 for rootless containers. The next section is kind of interesting in that uh, one of the issues when people tend to run containers with their containers is, is uh, overlay file systems and fuse overlay file systems don't allow you to mount fuse overlay on top of fuse overlay or overlay on top of overlay. So if you run a container, say a root full container inside of a container, if the container image that you're running Podman inside of is on overlay and you try to create more overlay mounts on top of that, the kernel rejects that. So where we create, we create the overlay uh, mounts in BioLive container storage and in the home directories um, dot local share storage. So in order to stop us from stopping users from accidentally using overlay on top of overlay, we built, create built-in volumes for them. And this this to tell Podman or Docker on the outside to create uh, volumes that aren't overlay to put the storage on. Next section. So we also, uh, there's, uh, uh, Podman has this concept of what's called containers.conf. And containers.conf allows us to change the default way that containers run um, in the environment. So let's go look at the containers.conf that we're creating. So here uh, uh, we, we actually ship with two containers.conf, which so we should ship with the system-wide defaults, which we put into Etsy containers, containers.conf. And then we ship with uh, uh, modifications in the rootless environment. So when they, um, 
system-wide one, it's interesting that we basically set up all of the namespaces to use the host namespace. So we feel that since you're already inside of a container, we don't need to the complexity of having, you know, uh, two network namespaces set up and two user namespaces and two IPC namespaces. So we're telling Podman inside of the container, just use the containers namespaces that were already set up. Similarly, we also uh, disable C groups because we're using C groups for the outside container. Um, and uh, so there's certain things that we also want to force because you're not going to be running system D inside of a Podman container. So you want to force it to use C group of S and file. Um, and we ship with C run instead of run C because mainly because C runs a lot smaller. Um, so the image stays smaller. Inside of rootless containers, there is an issue running slash proc, uh, setting up slash proc inside of uh, the container. So we're taking a, a hack to basically say, again, use the hosts, the container, the, the parent containers slash proc rather than running a lock, more lockdown slash proc inside of the container. <laughs> So next, next slide. So now um, we've set up all this configuration file. The next uh, group, we want to make sure that um, Podman owns all the content in the home directory. So we want to make sure that, um, you know, we added all these files. So we want to make sure that they're all owned by correctly. Um, and the rest of the code at the bottom of the container file or Docker file is all about uh, potentially allowing users to um, use sort of the host. Uh, there's, there's a way to leak the images that you have in a host into the container, um, but we're not gonna cover that in the rest of this talk, but if you go and read the papers, then you, you'll be able to find out more information about it. Next. So, um, I think I this guess, is me, yeah, Dan. Yeah, you go ahead. Yep. <laughs> All right. Uh, so um, it takes quite a lot to run Podman inside a container. Container engines require a fair amount of privileges. They need to be able to mount file systems, use system call clone to create user namespaces, and containers uh, usually require multiple UIDs to run. Um, so we have put together a demo showing how Podman works within a Podman container and within a Kubernetes container. So let me share my demo part. All right, so, um, hopefully you can see my screen. So um, the easiest way to run Podman within a container is to use the privilege flag. The privilege flag basically um, gives the container processes elevated capabilities similar to that of the host. So container engines can run inside it without any issues. Um, so the first scenario here is running rootful Podman and rootful Podman with the privilege flag. Um, as you can see here, I'm invoking Podman with sudo um, on my host, and we can see, and I'm running a simple container, UBI 8 minimal side my container that I'm running on the host, and just echoing hello. And as you can see, it successfully pulled the image, and um, the container ran successfully. All right, um, the next scenario is running rootless Podman and rootful Podman with the privilege flag. Um, I'm setting, I'm going to be making Podman rootless by setting the user flag to Podman, which is UID 1000 inside the container. And as you can see here, um, the container runs successfully. I'm gonna say the container runs successfully a lot of times because it does run successfully every time. Yes. So All if right. you know, if you know um, And then the next scenario is running rootful Podman and rootless Podman with privilege. So as you can see here, I'm no longer using sudo to invoke Podman on my host and running simple UBI 8 minimal container. And I get my echo hello output. Um, and then the last scenario is rootless Podman inside rootless Podman with privilege. Um, similar thing, set uh, the user to Podman inside the container with the user flag and the container runs as expected within the container. Um, so since Podman can be run in both rootful and rootless modes, we have these various combinations for you to choose from how you want to run your Podman on the host and within the container. Um, so yeah, using privilege is the easiest way, but we want to be able to run Podman in an privileged container to make sure that we're more secure. And we can do this with Podman um, by making a few adjustments. So um, over here, I'm running rootful Podman in rootful Podman uh, without the privilege flag. So as you can see, I'm using sudo to enter Podman. The first thing we need to do is we need to, we need to give it two additional capabilities. 
Uh, so capsis admin is required uh, by the by Podman running in your container as root, uh, so that it's able to mount the file systems it needs to. And then cap make node is required by the Podman running in your container as root uh, to be able to create devices under slash dev. Uh, we need to mount the dev use device uh, because we need to use this use overly FS uh, file system within an unprovisioned container. And finally, we need to disable FT Linux separation because FT Linux doesn't like it when contain doesn't allow containerized processes to mount all the required file systems needs. Sorry, Dan, we need to disable this in here. <laughs> um, so as you can see here, uh, the container ran successfully within my container in unprivileged mode, and we got the expected hello output. All right, so we can also do rootless podman and rootful podman with other privilege flag. Um, same thing here, we need to disable SE Linux separation, and we need to mount def fuse the few device, but we no longer need to give it the two additional capabilities we have to give it when we were trying to run rootful podman inside the container. That is because root podman will be created within the user namespace in the container and doesn't need those elevated capabilities. And similarly, we can run root as podman and root as podman without the privilege flag. As you can see here, I'm not using sudo to invoke podman. The flags are the same, but the same table as Linux and um, mount the views. All right, so that's running Podman inside Podman. That was, those, are, those are a few use cases. Um, another way yeah. you can also do it is to run the Podman on your host and leave the socket okay. inside, but I'm not demoing that today. Ervish, <laughs> did you want to make right. a couple of comments? Ervish, um, can you hear me? A couple of comments. Yeah, Irvishy, go ahead. You You're yeah, very so choppy right now. I don't know why. Uh, one of the uh, feet. One of the features uh, that's coming in the latest kernel is the uh, ability to run NATO to overlay. So, um, excuse me, Urushi, can you mute yourself, please? The echo is coming through your system. Urushi, can you mute yourself? Yeah, yeah, so what, one of the features that just got released in the 5.11 kernel, if you weren't attending the last session, um, was basically native overlay support. So a lot of the a lot of the demonstrations there she was leaking. She had to add the dev fuse into the containers in order to make this to work. But once we get to the five eleven kernel and everybody starts using five eleven kernel, then needing the dev fuse and fuse overlay running inside of these containers will not no longer be necessary. Not sure if Sally I was Yeah I think she did she drop? Hello. Um, I think she's having some technical difficulties. Let's just wait for a couple of minutes for her to join back. Okay, she's back. Yeah, yep. sorry about that. I don't know what happened to my system. <laughs> All yeah. right. Urvishi, did you hear what I just said? I was just talking about the fuse won't, might, will not be necessary once we get everybody gets to the 5.11 kernel. Yeah, yeah. All right. Um, so we continue? Yep. All right. <laughs> Hopefully my system is. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, so now the next thing I'm going to show is actually running Podman inside of a container in a, in a Kubernetes cluster. Um, so here I have a simple Kubernetes cluster running on my host. My node is up and ready. And the first case we're going to look at is running um, with the privilege flag set to true because that's the easiest way to do. Um, so very simple thing in your YAML, you just need to set the privilege option to true under security context. And I'm setting the user as 1000, so I'll be running podman as rootless within the container. Um, so as you can see here, my pod is up and running. We exec into the pod, and um, I printed out the ID, and we are running as user 1000 or user podman. Let's run a quick container. I'm just going to skip quickly to that. Um, and the container runs successfully. We see the um, hello output. Um, so one of the biggest use cases for running Podman inside a container is for builds purposes. So I'm going to uh, build a very simple Docker file. As you saw, there was just three lines just to show that builds also work within a container. Um, and as you can see here, my build was successful, and my image exists on my um, inside my container. All right. So now, um, as we mentioned earlier, we don't like running uh, Podman. We don't like we don't want to run Podman in a privileged container. We want to do it in an unprivileged container. Um, so we can do that similarly uh, within a container in Kubernetes. Uh, similar um, idea here. First thing you need to do is you need to disable SE Linux on the host that is running your Kubernetes cluster. 
Um, so as you can see here, I've already disabled it. My uh, SLinux is in permissive mode. The next thing you need to do is um, need to mount a DevFuse device. Uh, so the way to do that in Kubernetes is to create a device plugin and then link that device plugin in your pod YAML. So I just created my device plugin over here. Now let's take a look at what the pod YAML looks like for an unprivileged container. Um, so very similar, uh, uh, this is where I have, the limits part is where I have um, set my dev fuse and I'm just setting it this to user 1000 so I will be rootless within the container. And let's quickly create that and we can see my pod is up and running. And when we exec into the container, um, UID 1000 is expected. Let's run a simple container. Uh, we're going to wait for the poll. And yep, the container successfully ran. So uh, we can also run builds over here. Um, one thing to note though here for running a build is that we need to use, um, the, we need to set isolation to true root. Um, that's because we're already in a confined um, container and when we're running builds, we're trying to create more containers within other containers and since we're not in privilege mode, it won't have all the permissions it needs to mount all the various file systems. Um, so setting isolation to true root is, um, will make that work because we can bypass some of the permissions we need and it's completely fine because we're already confined in the container. Uh, so that was running rootless podman within an unprivileged container. Now let's take a look at running rootful podman within an unprivileged container in Kubernetes. Um, so as you can see here, the additional thing are four additional capabilities. Um, so sysadmin and make node are needed as mentioned earlier so that um, rootful podman in the container can uh, mount the file system that needs to and create devices under slash dev. We need sys to root and set f, set f cap here because these two capabilities are actually part of the default list of capabilities Podman runs with. But since Cryo is created for um, running containers in production environment, it has a much shorter list of default capabilities, so it's more locked down. And my Kubernetes cluster here is using Cryo. So if, and when you run Podman, it tries to load all the capabilities it needs. So if I run my container and Kubernetes that is using Cryo without adding these two capabilities, Podman will fail to run within the container. So that's why I need, I need those two additional capabilities when it comes to using a Kubernetes cluster. All right, so pod is up and running. Let's exec into the pod and we are running as root inside the pod. Simple um, container and there you go. We have the hello output. And we can also do builds here. Similarly, we have to set isolation to, to root. Um, and we can see it both was successful and my image is there. There you go. So that is all I have for um, demo wise. There are a few other cases that, uh, one second, let me go back to the slides. There are a few other cases that you can use to run um, Podman within the container. As I mentioned earlier, you can run Podman, uh, Podman as a daemon on your host and leak the socket into your container. You can do this both within Podman and the Kubernetes cluster. Um, you can also run your container with username spaces and pretend to give Podman the elevated capabilities it needs um, so that if a process breaks out, it won't really affect your host. Um, we have highlighted all of these in the two blogs that Dan and I have written uh, that you can check out if you want more examples and more details and just some steps on how to get started with this. Is there anything else, Dan? Nope, that's about as quick as we could possibly do this. So if anybody yeah. has any questions, we probably can take like two minutes worth of questions, I believe. Okay, yep. thanks guys. That was an amazing presentation. Thank you for sharing that with us. I'm looking at the Q&A section and there's no questions as of yet. So we can wait for a couple of minutes in case anyone wants to ask anything. Yeah, and obviously we went through this very quickly. One of the things, one of our goals is as, as people, uh, we, we want to make the two reports eventually into living guides because um, we, you know, a, as people experiment with running Podman inside of containers or builder inside of containers um, and the operating system, the kernel evolves, then we'll be able to uh, tighten these up and make them even more secure. Um, but uh, SE Linux being disabled for containers, as much as I hate to do that, is, is really fundamentally that SE Linux is trying to block the type of activity that it requires to run a container inside of a container. Um, so we have to disable it for, for those use cases. But we tend not to disable it on the host just for the particular containers where you want to run a container within the container.
Okay, I guess yep, we're done. I yep, I guess we're done. Uh, I guess I explained uh, everything perfectly. <laughs> exactly. You guys are, okay, we do have one question. Um, would this work on another OS running Docker? Like Mac OS? Um, so, yeah, it would work ba basically in Mac OS's case. Um, it's, you're really using, you know, it, we're using remote Podman at that point. So we're talking to a Podman service running inside of a VM that's running on a Linux box. And that Podman service can launch Podman inside of Podman. Um, so yeah, it would work on any opera, any Linux operating system or any operating system that could communicate with a Podman service running inside of a Unix opera uh, system. Similarly, if you're running a Docker daemon inside of uh, a Linux, or say, uh, Docker for Mac, uh, you could also talk to the Docker daemon and have it launch Podman inside of a container. Okay. Thank you, Danny. Um, yeah, I don't see any other questions. Okay, there is one. Sorry. Are the YAML files used in the demo available on GitHub repository or other sites? they want to replicate? Um, so the YAML files are not available right now, but we do have a container slash demos repo on GitHub. I will put them over there by tonight so you can take a look at it. We do have a uh, Podman and Podman directory over there. Let me see if I can find the link. And, the, and a lot of these YAML files are available in the two blogs, the linked blogs. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, they're all in the blog. Yeah, that's right. Okay. And we would love to have feedback. So when you try to do this and you get it working, then give us feedback on how open well it blog. worked or any problems. Yeah, open issues and then open PRs to fix those issues for us as well. <laughs> there is a lot. I mean, there's the, there's, as you know, I mean, the problem with doing this talk right now is that you know we had 25 minutes and there's a lot of deep concepts going on here, but. You know, basically, they all do work, and and hopefully we've optimized the images to use to to be able to do it. And our goal with those optimized images and the optimized Docker file is that people can then take those and and modify them to fit their own use cases. It's not that you know this is the only way to do it. It's just that the that we believe that these concepts make make it easier to do then, uh, and then we can further expand them as we go forward. Yep. Great. Uh, thank you so much, guys. Urushi has put the blogs on the chat. I will send a link for the breakout rooms in case anyone wants to interact with Dan and Urushi. Feel free to go there. And um, yeah, the next. Thank, thank you. Guys. you. Bye now.